This is Malika Hook from the University of Colorado, and this is the third installment of One Slide in Five Minutes, and the topic today is pseudoexfoliation. Pseudoexfoliation syndrome, sometimes abbreviated as PXF or PEX, is a systemic syndrome that is age-related, usually over the age of 50 and mostly over the age of 70, and involves ocular tissues with the gradual deposition of fibrillary material on the lens capsule, zonules, trabecular meshwork, corneal endothelium, iris and pupillary margin, and other tissues. The fibrillar material is thought to be due to abnormal turnover of the extracellular matrix in basement membranes. The disease is typically bilateral and asymmetric, with one eye sometimes not manifesting overt signs of disease until later in the follow-up period. Some studies have shown associations with cardiovascular disease, including myocardial infarction, stroke, and high blood pressure. The mothian pupillary margin pattern in PXF is thought to be due to focal membrane disruption in melanin-containing epithelial cells. There is a genetic component linked to the LOXL1 gene, which relates to enzymes that cross-link collagen and elastin. One common misconception that comes up is that PXF is exclusive to populations in or coming from Northern Europe. We see PXF from all parts of the world, with some African communities as well as Native American communities showing high prevalence in multiple studies to date. On examination, you can see all of the deposits mentioned above, including fibrillar material on the lens capsule and the drainage angle. The capsule manifestation is classically described as a bullseye pattern, which you can see in the photo. The bullseye pattern is created by the iris chafing away material in the deposit-free zone each time the pupil dilates and constricts. Zonular laxity often results in phacodinesis, and you can see the video here. First, I'm going to show you a little bit about the bullseye. This is the margin where this is the deposit free zone and you can see the deposit material here and over here. So this is the bullseye pattern. The moth eaten pattern on the pupillary margin you can see all the way down here and this is basically where light is transmitted more in this translucent area. From a phacodinesis standpoint I did want to play the video here and what you can see is when the patient is looking from side to side, just these micro movements that the lens itself is kind of shimmering back and forth, you can see that this is, in this case, phacodinesis. It would be called pseudophacodinesis if the patient were pseudophagic with the same type of motion. The zonular laxity can also lead to shifting of the lens anteriorly with narrowing of the angle and potential angle closure. The angle deposits are classically in clumps or lumpy bumpy compared to the velvety or even nature seen in pigmentary glaucoma. The deposits collect iris pigment cells and become pigmented over time. The angle also has the classic Sampolisi line, which is pigment accumulation anterior to and on Schwalbe's line. The obstruction of PXF material is mainly mechanical with plugging of the outflow pathway. This then leads to increased intraocular pressure and glaucoma development in approximately 40% of eyes with pseudoexfoliation. Performing cataract surgery can independently decrease the IOP in pseudoexfoliation patients, mainly due to washout of the deposit material. When performing cataract surgery, the surgeon must be alert to the following possible complications, including shallow anterior chamber due to zonular instability, poor pupillary dilation due to degeneration of both sphincter and dilator muscles, and the phacodinesis that I mentioned earlier with the video. Caution must be taken to avoid zonular dialysis, which is more common in pseudoexfoliation, and the extended transcript for this video will go into each one of these potential complications with a little bit more depth. Treatment options include medications, as per standard for treating most forms of glaucoma. Selective laser trabeculoplasty can be used and it works well initially. However, there is a tendency for it to be shorter lasting due to the accumulation of deposits. I typically treat 360 degrees with 0.4 millijoules in heavily pigmented angles. Some surgeons choose to only treat 180 degrees at a time. For MIGS devices or angle surgery, you can pick whichever device works best for you and they tend to work very well in pseudoexfoliation. And a note on cataract surgery. It is best not to wait long on PXF cataracts. These lenses should be removed at first sign of visual issues, as it will only get harder to remove them later. In summary, pseudoexfoliation is a systemic disease with serious ocular manifestations related to the gradual deposition of fibrillary material on the lens and within the drainage angle, leading to elevated IOP and glaucoma in 40% of the cases. Patients are over 50 years of age, and the disease manifestations are bilateral and often asymmetric. Treatment involves the traditional medication, laser, MIGS, and filtration surgery paradigm with a caveat that IOP lowering from standalone cataract surgery and laser trabeculoplasty often exhibit shorter lasting efficacy due to the buildup of PXF deposits. Consider visiting the following educational resources including keogt.com and I thank you for your time.